in Lake Placid, it's reached like negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit while I've, while I've been there. So. I hate cold weather for one thing, so I really want to go and travel when it's warm. Um, yeah, everyone asks me, why are you doing a winter sport when you hate cold weather? It's been within the past few years that I've started hating the cold weather because here, you know, the cold weather here is like, it gets to 20 degrees and everyone's like, oh, it's so cold out. And I didn't mind that so much. I would always be outside building snow forts and sledding and everything like that. Um, it's when you get to the negative 20 degrees that you really start to develop a hate for it and realize you're definitely going to retire to Florida or something. Thank you all for coming here. We're very excited this week uh, with the news that you know, summer is heading off to the Winter Olympics. And I would like to start today's ceremony by introducing her father, who's a captain on 29 Engine, uh, Captain William Bridge. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Littleton B. Wyatt Firehouse. I guess I'd just like to say the pride runs both ways. I've always been really proud to say I have so much family in the Baltimore City Fire Department. I'm honored that you're all here, and I hope I can represent you well. My sister and I were definitely picked on the most, but I think I think even though I was the youngest, maybe she was picked on a little bit more because um, I always wanted to be just like my brothers. Like I was a huge tomboy, <laughs> like following them around, climbing trees, and just getting all into all kinds of shenanigans. And so we we kind of like ganged up like a little bit on her actually. So I, I didn't want to be picked on, so I figured out how to how to hang out with my brothers and to not be the one that was tormented. She was always interested in playing with me or Alex. I mean, she never. She was never really interested in dolls or girly things, always interested in running around in sports, soccer, football. You know, it's just that aggressive spirit she has. My brothers just played soccer, intramural soccer, just for fun, and then my sister and I, um, we played on the local travel team, Mason Dixon. Um, I played on York United for a little while, but I eventually had to quit for Luge, and then uh, we both played in high school. I wasn't that good, but I think if I had stayed with soccer, I, I actually would have loved to be in college playing soccer. We just happened to be for a skiing vacation, and we're like, oh, this looks like fun. Like, we can take a break from skiing and try this out. And um, it was a lot of fun. And um, just started talking to Gordy Shear. He's the marketing director for USA Luge. And he suggested, you know, like, oh, she's the right age. Like, you know, seems competitive. So he suggested that I go up to Lake Placid. Um, for a screening camp to try out for the development team. What they did was they built kind of like a, a snow luge track and um, we had these plastic sleds. So it was, it was actually just sledding, but they were calling it the Verizon Luge Challenge. Um, and so they had a timing system set up and you had to walk your sled up and try to have the fastest time. And we had like unlimited training runs and then you could eventually pick your run to be your race run. And um, I remember I had the fastest training run of the day, but my brother and my sister actually won. They each won an iPod, and I was really jealous because I had the fastest time, but it didn't count. When I first went to Lake Placid, my dad went along and he just stayed in town because, you know, he didn't want to send like an 11 year old kid up by himself to go to this strange town. So he came up with me, and um, it was the first time I was really away from home and staying with these like couple other like young girls in a dorm situation. So that was like a interesting thing like I'd never gone to like Girl Scouts camp or anything so it was my first experience like that. My first day sliding, um, Duncan Kennedy who was my coach for a few years he was coaching the screening camp and they started us really low on the track so it was really not dangerous or anything it, you know it was a uh, fine but I remember not I didn't know how to steer and he said to me, he said to all of us, you know, all right, we'll send you down and see how you do the first time. And I'm sitting there freaking out, like, what do I do? I don't, I don't even know how to steer. I don't know what to do. And so I was terrified sitting there. And so I was just like, okay, well, I can't back out now. And it was a lot of fun and it wasn't too terrifying. So I decided to do it again. I loved it right away. Just, it was this huge adrenaline rush and it was... It was awesome going so fast because I've always, like, even skiing, my dad would yell at me when I was younger and say, like, you have to, you have to turn. You have to learn to turn. And I would just want to go straight down and see how fast I could go to keep up with my brothers. Our team trials at the beginning of the season, we had a race in Lake Placid and a race in Utah. And um, the one in Lake Placid, I was in fifth place after the race, and it had been a really close margin separating me from fourth. So I was a little bit angry about that, but um, I just remind myself that I can't change it after it's done and so I have to let it go because sitting there thinking about it, it's just, 
it'll tear you apart. Every little thing goes towards it. So when you're when races come down to a thousandth of a second, you know, we're training for so many years to just make sure everything is, you know, like your toes are pointed, your head's back, your equipment's in peak condition, because everything comes down to it. Actually, wanted to go into ski racing. That was I was like, oh, I want to go to the Olympics for ski racing. That'd be so much fun. And when I was ten, we went on a vacation to um, Stratton in Vermont, and we saw these these girls going up on the gondola in their spandex suits for ski, you know, to train for downhill skiing. And I told my mom, I really want to do that. It looks like so much fun. And um, she gave me the reasons of it would be dangerous, I would be away from home, and it would be kind of expensive for why I couldn't do this. The next year I started luging, which is dangerous, away from home, <laughs> kind of expensive. Just like at this point in the race. I think my worst crash was probably in Paramanova, Russia a few years ago. Um, the track there was just really difficult for everyone, and I crashed the first run of the race. I managed to, in one of the curves, hit the top part of the curve, which we call the woods, um, so it's like the just the top of the curve, and then come down and hit the bottom, the short wall, and then hit the woods again, um, at which point I was like nearly unconscious on my sled, um, just going down the rest of the track, and I actually got back on and finished the race, so I got to take a second run where I did the exact same crash a second time in a row. It felt to me like... The whole time I was like, oh, I made it, like, let's see if I can do it again, like, let's see if I can make the next cut, the next level. Um, and it's actually been a, a huge, like, stressful thing in my life, just like, I felt like each, each, like, um, portion of the qualification process has felt like, oh, I made it, like, barely, cross my fingers and hope I keep going, so... I guess it's it's a lot more positive to look at it as momentum that was building. I crashed in the first race. Um, 8th place in the second race, didn't qualify for the third race, and then I placed uh, 15th, which was kind of like right in the middle. So I didn't know what was going to happen in the fifth race because it was up and down, up and down middle. Going into this season, I was expecting to feel really stressed out all the time, because um, I had spoken with some of my older teammates about the whole process, and you know, it's the most stressful thing I've ever been through, but I didn't feel stressed out, I just couldn't sleep for two months. Um, and I couldn't eat. I had to force myself to eat. I just had no appetite. Like, I would be hungry and I would eat three bites of my meal and I'd have to force myself to finish it. So leading up to the last race, um, I was having a whole, like, mental struggle of, like, not letting myself get worried about the results. And I was just trying to focus on training and having good runs. My first run, after my first run, I was in fourth place. Um, and my second run dropped me back to ninth place. But... And so people are thinking like, oh, you had a bad second run. I actually had two great runs, um, probably better than all my training runs. And so when I came up the outrun after my second run and I saw I was in sixth place with three more sleds to go, I was, I was really worried. I was like, what happened? I had, a, I had a great run. I never want anyone to mess up, but usually you're thinking like, okay, you know, go slow. Like I want to, I want to move up another spot. But my thoughts this whole time were I wanted these girls to like go as fast as they could because if a single one of them messed up significantly, um, then I, would, I wouldn't be going to the Olympics right now. You're probably going to go out to eat tonight and celebrate. What's the meal going to be? Summer's choice. Where's it going to be, Summer? I want a hamburger. <laughs> so, wherever we can get that.